Hello everyone, today I'm going to touch on Palantir and its stock. And to some people, the things that I'm going to share in this video may be considered as unpopular opinions. But to set the context, I am actually a fan of the company and its software, but not so much of their stock yet. Watch on to find out more. But before I dive into the details, hope you can give this video a support by tapping on the like button. Your little support means a lot to me. First up, if you have clicked into this video, you would have known what does Palantir do, or at least Aga Aga roughly know what their company business is all about. So I am also just going to Aga Aga do a quick intro on the company, in my way. Alright, Palantir offers two solutions, one for the government agencies and one for commercial companies, named Gotham and Foundry respectively. And the operating system for these solutions is called Apollo. Very technical? Okay, simplified version is, Palantir allows governments and companies to make sense of unstructured data. Their software unlocks a whole new world of data that companies can use to improve their businesses. Okay, for the longest time, like 10 over plus years, Palantir worked exclusively for the government, and they only expanded their offering to the private sector in recent years. The rapid adoption by the private sector's companies could be due to the reputation Palantir has with the government. I mean, how often can you find a company which works closely with the US military, CIA, National Security Agency, FBI, Special Ops Command and more? Amazing right? I also think so. Rumor even has it that their software helped to track and locate Osama bin Laden which led to the eventual assassination. Well, I don't know about you but I am very fascinated by what their software can do. It's like those James Bond or spy movie or something like this. The LAPD, the FBI, the CIA, they're all gonna come for you. Good luck. Okay, goosebumps. Anyway, you get the idea. The company has extremely high level of security clearance and can handle highly classified information, or rather top secret information. And I think this level of credibility has earned them quite a number of contracts in the commercial sector. I mean, just like in Singapore, when the contractor is used by the Tinghu, aka the government, you will think there is some level of quality assurance, right? Or no? Another competitive advantage they have is the stickiness of the software. Their deals and software are usually expensive, very expensive. Therefore, once you become their customer, it is likely you are going to stay as their customer, cause the switching cost is very high in terms of time and money. As with every company, Palantir has their downsides and red flags, and they are stock dilution, stock-based compensation, insider selling, high valuation, expensive, overvalued stock, not very profitable, non-scalable business, just an IT project consulting firm, blah blah blah. Sounds like a lot, right? Fret not, just do a search on YouTube and Google, or visit Reddit forum, you will find lots of people addressing these downsides. They will calm you down, because those are just noise. Or are they not? For me, the biggest downside is that if the company were to have any sort of lapse or failure on its security and ability to protect sensitive information, the company could come crashing down. But of course, one may argue that they have been around for so many years and have been working with the government. Hence, the chance of that happening is very slim. But you never know because its brand reputation hinges on the reliability and security of its software system. So one bridge, just one bridge, could greatly impact the relationships with the government. It's really a double-edged sword. It's like go big or go home, or some may say too big to fail. Okay, now let's talk about the stock. Though I am a fan of what they do, Palantir is a perfect example of a great company but a bad stock. Palantir stock is actually a favourite among retail investors, almost like a poster boy or girl when people talk about hyper growth stock. In my opinion, they are just second to Tesla, both are the internet sensation. 
but I would like to highlight that stock may not be a fair reflection of the company's business. Stock doesn't paint you the full story of the company's operations. They only tell you about the demand and supply of the stock at a particular point in time. So this brings me to the next point, which is, I think a lot of people out there are still not aware of what exactly the company offers. Despite expanding to the private sector, interestingly, Palantir is still a secretive company. A company that you thought you know what they offer, but what you know could be just the tip of the iceberg. You probably won't know in depth about their products or what exactly they can do for you or to you. It's like Stephen Chow, a well-known Hong Kong actor and director. He once said, I have filmed a lot of sad movies, but the audience said they are comedies. It's only when we watch them for the second or third time, we tend to discover the hidden meanings behind these movies. Even till now, a lot of people whom he worked with still don't understand him. So this is the issue with Palantir. They fail to effectively communicate to shareholders and investors similar to Tesla in their earlier stage as well. It could also be due to the sensitivity nature of their business and the classified info that they are handling. Thus, they are not able to showcase their innovative software or end results. But hopefully, this will change moving forward as they move into the private sector and people start to understand the company better. That's it. This begs the question of how long will it take for the stock to have significant gains. You know, sometimes the market does not have patience. Investors may not want to wait 10 to 20 years for something amazing to happen. After one year of bloodbath, they may cut their losses or shift their funds to somewhere else when they break even. They may say, hey, this is not the kind of growth I'm looking for and I'm out. All in all, Palantir's fundamentals are getting better along the years. However, their stock looks pretty bad. The price could retest the opening of $10. For me, if Palantir takes years to achieve significant stock gains, I'd rather put my money in something like Microsoft or Apple for the next 12 months or so, and then reinvest them in Palantir at a later date. Case in point, I was observing this stock last year at around September when it was at the range of $26 to $29. And you can see that I have set a few price alerts at the top right hand corner. But I held my bullets and didn't enter. I went for Nvidia instead. Then Palantir dropped to $16 to $18 range recently, while Nvidia went up quite a fair bit, I think by more than 25%. I'm not saying I'm a good stock picker, because as what others say, Everyone is a genius in a bull market, and last year was a bull market where the broader market went up for close to 30%, but Palantir declined by more than 20%, and this spells tremendous opportunity costs. Yes, long-term investors can continue to DCA into the stock to average down, but for me, I thought why not have the money invested in other stocks first, even if they are the defensive ones which give you steady and stable 10% annual growth. I am still bullish about the company, but I also feel that the timing and entry price do matter to a certain extent, even if you are a long-term bull. I think it is okay to hold your bullets for a little while more before putting your money into this stock. I don't need to hop on the train at the earlier stage, as I wouldn't mind entering when it is at 25% of its journey to the moon, or even at the halfway mark. But of course, this cannot be applied to those who want to be early in such potential hyper-growth stock. Meanwhile, I will invest my money in other stocks, wait a little more and move the funds over when it shows its true potential. Alright, that's all for this video. What are your thoughts on Palantir stock? Are you one of the holders? Let me know in the comments section below. And lastly, thanks for watching my video. Hope you can like, share and subscribe to my channel to show a little support. Thank you.